Howdy folks. I'm just noodling around while I set up here. So uh, bear with me for a sec. How do I stop this looper? No. That's got it. All right. So I thought I'd do a stream at a different time of the day. I always get asked for that and it's pretty much like nine or 10 hours later than what I would normally do it. So uh, I am monitoring the chat over here. So uh, feel free to say hi, I'll give you a shout out wherever you may be. So it's a completely different time on a completely different day. I thought I'd uh, do a stream pretty much regarding like coming up with songs and songwriting, all that kind of stuff. Um, and how I go about it once I come up with a concept just to see how it feels when I play something new that may have song potential. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of everything. So uh, feel free to... It's a Q&A as well, which it always is. So if you want to um, ask any questions, you can go ahead. Let me know what the sound's like too. I'm just uh, using my Super Reverb here on a very pretty low volume. And I've got a couple of pedals on the floor. I got the uh, Donna Delay and Looper pedals. And I thought I'd just go sort of show you folks how uh, I guess the process for me works. So I've been doing something on a demo for a while um, that isn't a song or anything, it's just something that I've put together that. I kind of feel like that may actually end up being something because it actually kind of feels pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to put together a loop and then mess around with it and see if it actually feels like a song. So uh, here we go. So that's pretty much on time. Kareem, how are you, man? Let's turn this down. So yeah, just doing some uh, a quick improv live stream tonight. I thought, why not? I'll give it a go. And uh, it's a bit of a look at, uh, I guess, the songwriting process, looping, how loop pedals help with that kind of stuff. Helps sort of formulate ideas. I just want to see if I labeled the stream properly. Okay, I did. That, that's a good thing. Alright, so uh, this was just something that I've been playing on demos for a while. It's just like an A chord moved to C and D, basically. So we're going to see if this could actually be anything. Oh, so there's two of them in there. I don't like it because it's the ideas weren't very good <laughs> and that's the whole thing when you uh, when you're writing tunes or you attempt to write a song at least um, I tend to sort of try different tempos try different feels uh, finger pick it play with a pick which I don't have oh yeah, there's a pick here so uh, yeah I'll try some different things and we'll see if we can actually get like maybe a chorus and verse happening here so uh, We've got Lev12, how are you man? Thanks for uh, stopping by. We've got Bill O'Brien, he asks, uh, what looper am I using? I'm using the Donna um, Deluxe Looper. I'll bring it up so you can see it. And I'm also using the, uh, the Ultimate Delay Pedal by Donna as well. I always like having a looper when I'm messing with song ideas. It gives me good inspiration to see what the solo parts would feel like and um, whether or not the, the stuff's actually, you know, some songs just pop out of the guitar for me and others take time to get the feel right. So I'm gonna try this again and just see how it feels.
Bear with me, I haven't used this looper pedal since the last live stream that I used it on, which was like about a month ago. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four. That was pretty good. This already feels a little better. I guess it is trial and error, man. This is just uh, a bit of sort of a, a fun way to see if something is going to work. I reckon the, the loopers are the best for sort of hearing your ideas back in real time. And then sort of like layering things up because you get definitely get different inspiration when you start to hear all the rhythmic ideas behind it. A bit of delay now. MC, how are you, man? Thanks for popping in. I'm uh, trying to craft a tune um, just by like ideas that I've had that I use on demos. That seeing how they would feel going into like a song idea and loopers for me give me that inspiration to see how things would sound rhythmically and with different layers, all that kind of stuff. So, thanks for the nice comments there. Uh, saying you uh, joined and were greeted with some beautiful music. Thanks for that, man. And thanks to Lev as well. I appreciate that. So, um... It's not inspiring me a whole lot. It's it's not a crap idea, but uh, it's not it's not like musically. It's not making me sort of go, oh wow, have a listen to this. So it might be a fun sort of uh, verse riff, but it would have to definitely go somewhere else after that. I always like those minor changes. F sharp minor is basically an A in a lot of ways, but they always work well together. And then the 
trick is to sort of resolve the change back to where you were. That's a classic sort of change, just a, a minor and then a run up chromatically basically to uh, back to the A. You've heard that in a million songs. Let me just take some uh, questions here. Alright, so Ahmad Kareem says, would you suggest starting with a simple looper or something like the Digitech Trio? Um, I've heard mixed things about the Trio. I hear they're, they've got their great points, which is awesome. Um, one thing I hear about them is you have to play all your starting parts like this. You know, like big, big chords. Otherwise, the mechanics or whatever inside it, the, you know, the, the digital part um, doesn't actually, like, respond extremely well. You have to play big chords, so that's not a bad thing either. I should probably do more of that stuff when I write songs, but, uh, yeah, look, a, a simple... All I used for a long time was my Boss DD7. There's a hold function on there. It wasn't like a proper looper function, but it did essentially the same thing. And, um, yeah, I just think I had an RC30 for a while by Boss. I just found it was too counterintuitive and a little bit too clumsy. If I, I would recommend buying like the, the Jam Man one, maybe would be a good one to choose. A friend of mine's got that and it's a whole lot less complicated than the RC3, RC30 was. So, um, so, uh, Lev12 says, are there any methods to how you construct a chord progression or is it all from experience and feel or feeling or and feeling? Um, it's, it's both. Like, I think I know what chords to some extent go with other, other changes. Other times it's luck. Um, I remember when I wrote this song, for example, this is, a uh, one that I, I came up with called, uh, tried her best. And it's F sharp, A, you've heard me play this before. Coming out of that, that um, E, A, F sharp minor happened and it was a fluke and I loved it. So sometimes it can just be, um, it can be just luck, but sort of rough guessing of what you want to hear. Other times you can hear stuff in your head, like you're going, "Oh, where's that? Where does that want to go?" I can, I can tell it's going somewhere. Um, one of the more complicated chord progressions I wrote uh, was based on a couple of songs that I really liked, and uh, oh, I've forgotten it. So this this particular one um, has a few changes, but. It was, I, I actually remember, I jammed out on that for ages, you know, the whole, um... So I was layering this up. Eventually I came up with some ideas of the ones that I recorded. The loops, the loops not right. Like I said, I haven't used this looper for a while, guys. And all right, so yeah, basically, there's a couple of changes in here that um, kind of just worked because I, I guess I'd played similar chords in other songs, so I guess playing other songs does help your songwriting to, to some extent as well. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff I've come up with is just accidents, you know, like I, that whole, that thing you used to hear me play on a lot of demos. Stemmed from a chord of learning uh, Money for Nothing. It's that same shape that Nothla plays on a live version that I was, I just was moving around one day like. Oh. 
So move chords around, see how they feel. I think a lot of people are scared to move chords um, or scared of making mistakes with stuff. Um, some of the stuff that I really like the sound of, like it's a C chord moved up to a D or a D chord moved right up the neck. So that's like one chord that can bring a lot of inspiration, you know, especially if you're just playing a D. So yeah, you can move stuff around and see if it inspires you. Um, that was obviously a really quick, a really quick thing there. But you know, play play the same thing a whole lot of different ways. Or Yeah, so mess around with the groove. I think the groove is important. Like um, when I when I try to make a so when I try to write songs now, that they've got a definitive type of feel. Um, sometimes in my head, I already know what the feel is that I want, which really helps. Um, sometimes I'm looking for that groove, like I was just playing that sort of funky, um, you know, like that finger picking sort of um, hammering on thing is always good. Other times, it's just like I want to play something more bluesy. Uh, or funky or whatever, you know. So um, I just tend to come up with a groove and, and see what inspiration hits. Even if I'm just playing a root note on a C, for example, like... Then I'll just try some, maybe a minor. Oh, I buggered that loop up, hang on. Oh yeah, here we go. I think I just came in on the wrong beat. See this? is great because it's like one chord so far and less is more when you do this sort of stuff so this would be how I'd f sort of feel it out you know? I just turn the loop down here turn the amp up last part of that riff kind of felt really good. I don't know if I can play it again, but it was like a... Let's see if I can loop it. Alright, so... 
but it's not quite sitting right. I already just had another like creative thought in my head over this. See, as I just listened back to this, I can already hear what I, I like and don't like about it. <laughs> um, there's a couple of things in there I'd, I'd already want to change, but uh, the concept's kind of there for a, you know just for one chord. So what I might do, I might play a couple of chords and see what we can uh, fill out here as well. So uh, let's let's kill this one. Let's see if I can remember how to kill it. There we go. All right. So that lick is a favourite of yours, yeah, that, um... I've been messing around with, like, not playing root notes on, um, on some chords, so, like... You hear me play this a lot. So that, that's like a C. So that's cool as well, but anyway, yeah, let's let's try a couple of different things. So, um, Joel says the single coils are quiet in that room. Yeah, in in this room. Yeah, this room's good. <laughs> this room's much better than the other one. Yeah. So sometimes I've actually written a song on bass recently. Um, the chord pattern just sort of came out from playing what I could hear of root notes and trying to resolve it. And uh, that, that was a good experience. It was great. I, I tend to always, anytime I come up with any idea, I get the iPhone or any phone I got or whatever, and I record it and save it and then speak out the chords if I can, um, if I know the conventional chords. And then I've got that. And nearly every album I've ever recorded, I've had samples on my phone or samples on my computer that I've referenced as I'm going to record it properly. So the the, uh, the ideas have I could play you pretty much all of my stuff in its original form that I had just noodling around at home and uh, you know on my own basically before I had the looper and anything so I start with that then I try the looper and see oh how would this sound in a band context and all that kind of stuff so and once I know it, it's going to work with the looper and I'm I'm happy with the feel of the the, the groove. Um, then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll just go, yeah, this is this, this is a song. I can just tell it's going to work. And, and that's just a trust your, trust your gut kind of thing and trust that whatever you're coming up with is uh, is good. I think songwriting is important. I, I always think, like, um, not enough people write songs. Everybody plays everybody else's songs way too much. And there's only so much of that that's... Uh, that's fulfilling maybe for a lot of people everyone some people might think they can't write songs but I just wonder if everybody these people have actually tried as well you know you take a chord progression like that and run it backwards So this is just what I do, I, I just mess around with ideas. literally started doing, doing this stream with no actual concept in mind in terms of like what I was gonna play so um, yeah I thought it might be fun to sort of see if we can get something happening yeah, maybe let's have a listen to this So 
already the C sucks. <laughs> Let's get rid of it. This has got like an old kind of vibe. Alright, I think I've got something going on. Then you realize what song it actually is, and then you go, Maybe I, I didn't actually come up with this. Always have to steal my kisses from you. It's a bit different, but it's that sort of vibe. The feels too familiar. It is a different chord progression, but you know. Uh, yeah, let's let's try something else. That's kind of nice. All right, so now we take G, A minor, C, and D, and we make it, you know, something. We turn it into something. So we could either have a pretty song, or we could maybe play it with these kind of chords. drills it into your brain and then you can play over it. What do you need? Oh man. Yeah, it's sort of like a half time thing. Timing was a big crap. There's already a lot about that I like. Uh, I like that it actually feels kind of like it's got a really positive vibe about it. My timing was off, obviously here, so uh, um, yeah, yeah, that was was wasn't very tidy. But I'll try it again. I reckon I can refine this down to something that sounds pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Sebastian says, uh, "Do you have any tips for relicking guitar knobs?" Uh, yeah, just. Uh, Mm -hmm. No, nah, not really, man. I, I don't do any of that stuff to my guitars. Maybe just use it for a long time. <laughs> nah, look, I don't know, mate. It's not my not my bag of tricks, really. But uh, you can just scratch them up on the bloody road out the front, leave them in the sun, watch them fade. I don't know. I'm not too sure, man. Plastic can uh, age pretty quickly sometimes, and other times it'll it won't. So uh, I look. I just love guitar, says, are you in Sydney? No, I'm actually in Melbourne, man. The, uh, it's just, yeah, cold old Melbourne, as we like to call it today. So, uh, yeah, so I really like that vibe. So for those who have just joined, I'm just messing around with some ideas that are coming out of thin air tonight. Maybe put together a song, show you my process of kind of like working things out, feeling out an idea and then maybe recording it and then actually you know doing a proper song with the band or just writing it at home and recording it for myself so um, yeah I think writing can be a cool thing to do so 
Anyway, let's try this again. I'm going to start this time with the base part so I can actually stay more in time. Maybe not completely in time, but... So, uh... Oh, the delay has to be on, doesn't it? Hang on, let's try that again. Man, you listen to back to your timing and you go, that's just terrible. I've been playing long enough to be able to play better timing than this. Oh, well, that'll have to do. It's pretty close. You can also go the opposite way. I started with big heavy chords, so now I'm going to start with some softer stuff. And just build it up. So you can kind of hear how it would sound with, you know, different things going on. Hopefully the sound's alright, guys, too, because, uh... Yeah, I'm using the uh, a mic pointing sort of up at my mouth here. So right now, the loop's just playing playback mode, so I can jam over it. See, less is definitely more when you're doing this. The more you play over the loop, the busier it gets. But it's also good to do that just to get a feel for the grooves and stuff. So this is in C, um, it's in C major or dominant sort of stuff, so what I tend to do is, um, sorry I meant to say G, my mistake, it's G, so I'm playing in uh, playing in E minor pretty much, which is the, the same scale as the major scale in G. lyrical phrasing in my head, like some of what I'm noodling around with now will give me some sort of lyric context to what would be going on. Yeah, like... Is if you want to relic your uh, your uh, control knobs on a strat, leave them in a glass of cocoa. Right, I'll have to do that. As you may or may not know, there's always a bottle of coke somewhere not far from me, man. <laughs> so what happens when you get up at six in the morning? So yeah, this to me already sounds like a song. It may already be a classic chord progression, but that's the beauty of music. Unless I'm consciously aware of it, like that last one, it can become my song. Um, and the way that I'd phrase over it would obviously be unique as well in terms of guitars or vocals, whatever. So I really like this feel, it's, it's quite cool. So let's layer it up a little more.
like it. I definitely like it. That would be like the mellow intro, you know? the last part up. So let's take that last layer off here. Let's try this again. Turn that off while I talk. Sorry, uh, it's got a bit of a pop sort of feel to it, but it's also you can also turn that into something. I reckon, um, you know, the heavier you played it, I don't have any overdrive pedals or anything out tonight, so I'm just playing clean into this beast on. What's it on? It's on two and a bit. And yeah, it's all in the it's all in the rhythmic approach. You know, you can do that. Do the uh, Hendrixy thing. play it like a, a strum thing as well. Then you find all the other chords. It wasn't quite right. So yeah, I don't know, just simple ideas can turn into something really cool. Once you nail the feel, this is the thing with me. What I have to almost hear something that I like to want to develop it. So already I really like this idea. Um, this would be something that I definitely like to develop. And I can already hear um, how it would sound in my head playing with the guys. Um, or just recording it and putting a demo down. So... That would definitely be like the intro groove and, and the verses. And then it, if it you know came up to another part, I always like minor changes. It's I don't know if it's cliche or not in what I do, but I definitely love having the uh, the changes. So after after that D I read G, weren't we before? So let's try uh Let's try an E minor. So. something in there that works so I reckon E minor B minor C definitely back to the G man that sounds great so if you want to rip this off have at it it's your song as well um, so yeah let's see how that uh, sounds now so There's a song and chorus right there. So a uh, song and chorus, a verse and chorus. So uh, that would be, you know, we could throw a bridge in. We could try that as well. But uh, yeah, so the uh, actual groove now, if I can play this to the loop station, I'm going to give it a shot. Um, 
let's just refresh it in my head first though. Awesome. It sounds actually a bit like a soul song that, uh, not that it sounds familiar, but I mean like it has elements of sort of those older soul kind of songs. Not so much the funky stuff, but you know what I mean. It's got those, got those kind of things. So, um, all right. So Ginger Lefty says, first time your life feed has suited me. Class. I'm not too sure what class means, but thanks, man. <laughs> All right, so uh, I just love guitar. Says, okay, I'm in Sydney. I was going to see if you jammed in a band locally, but obviously not. Nah, I I don't live in Sydney, but a mate of mine, Ray Beetle, does. He's the best guitar player I've ever seen in my life. So go watch him. He's a Sydney boy. Seriously, the best. I've seen lots of pros. And he wipes the floor with him. So <laughs> go check him out. Um, yeah, yeah. If you've got any questions, let me know. Let me know what you think of that chord progression as well. It's just something I'm messing with here. So I'm going to try and put it down on the looper. And then we can get some context and, and have a listen to how it will sound. So I'll start with the, with the bass part again. Or just the root notes. And then we'll build it up from there. And hopefully I don't butcher it along the way. So I'm just going to do twos. I almost forgot where I was going. So that's just the bass line there. Or the, the faux bass line. So Matthew Burrow says, uh, Ray Beetle is the man, I've never seen a better player. Yeah, me either, man. He's, you know, I put him in the same realm as Derek Trucks. He's just one of those freak of nature players. So uh, yeah, look him up, folks. Look up Ray Beetle, like Beetle with a, with a D in the middle. So let's add to this now on this next one. should have played this sort of chord all the way through, so I'm going to just patch the start. Yeah, it's close enough. Alright, cool. So the loop's probably a bit long to do on a live stream, but at least now I can hear how the groove actually sounds. Do I know any good um, players around Queensland? Um, not off the top of my head, man. I'll have to have a think about that. So this song is completely pulled out of my ass. 
<laughs> on the live stream. Alright, so the groove's there now. So now I can fiddle around and I'll, I'll make, bring the intensity of it up as we go. Um, super reverb. Yep, that's the one, man. Oh, that's the change, isn't it? Critically thinking the entire time that I'm I'm jamming to this is um, saying that uh, it needs a pause. So I didn't do it in the loop, but after the I just know what I like the sound of. I always think a pause in a chord progression is good. So after that last, um, where are we? So let's do it again. <laughs> After this, uh, so. so I'd put a pause here, like a one, two, three, four. It takes me a while, even when I write stuff, to uh, sort of lock it in the brain. Yeah, I like it. Overdoing the complexity of it, so. There. Yeah, there it is. So that's cor chorus and um, verse, or verse and chorus. And uh, I think that's got potential 
to actually be a tune. Now we could put a bridge in the middle there somewhere. Um, I don't always do bridges in songs. I just think like, why stick to it? Why stick to the formula when you can kind of, sorry about my socks here guys. <laughs> sorry about, you know, uh, the, these awful bloody socks I got on. You know, you don't have to just write a song with a, with a bridge. There's plenty of great songs that don't have them. Um, so don't feel obliged to overcomplicate something that just feels good as it is. And for me, that feels pretty good. I can already hear the kind of, like, starting the groove with a rim shot, you know, on the drums. Just having a, it's a really nice feel. So I write the lyrics and I just put things aside. So what I might do is get, or go through some of my lyrics. Excuse me, I just had some Subway. <laughs> and, uh, and see if anything in there kind of captures the mood of the song. Um, but if not, I, I just try doing something else, and I kind of like, like I said, it's got a it's got a happy sort of positive vibe about it. So, um, all right. So Isaac's or um, Ord has posted two things in the chat here, but it says message retracted. That's got nothing to do with me, guys. So I don't. I'm not touching the, the stream. I don't know what's going wrong there, but uh, if your messages aren't coming through, I apologize. Maybe they were flagged. I'm not too sure if, uh, what's going on there, but, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, pulled it out of my ass, so it's a brown sound, man, that's exactly right. And that's the cool thing about doing stuff like this, you know, you can play, you can play so many chords different ways, or parts of chords, and, and it's just about finding that feel that's, that gets, you know, you your creativity moving and flowing. You know, I think a lot of that sort of stuff always sounds great in songs. It sounds a lot more appealing to um, musos than just, you know. But that can also sound good too. Simple can be great as well, but uh, yeah. of May, uh, why, is, why is my computer saying that? It doesn't make any sense. My comp oh, it's gone to American time for some reason. So it's like the, the 5th of the 8th, the 8th month. I mean, it's saying May. What a stupid computer. Anyway, yeah, so uh, I, I just got asked by uh, Jow if I'm using any uh, pedals. I'm using the uh, Donna Looper when I'm looping up the sound or the song. And uh, I've got a delay pedal, which isn't on right now. I'm just using reverb on the amp. The Super Reverbs have a brilliant reverb. I love it. It's up a little bit higher than I'd play with live, but... So all that tone's just, uh, just amp right now. This is with the uh, delay on. about song writing songs or coming up with ideas is as soon as you hit the the, the um as something that you really dig you'll know it straight away it took me a little while to get into the feel of that i like the chord progression at the start but i didn't you know if you rewind it it's going to sound pretty crap to where it ended up just in what 25 minutes 30 minutes or 50 however long we've been going but uh yeah so the feel is 
is definitely there and it's a feel for me that's familiar in terms of the way I play and that's what it comes down to so come up with a feel that you don't need to do all that you know the hammer-ons and crap to get it to sound good it's just sometimes playing a lot less than that will work well too like instead of playing you know that G you're just playing playing an A minor like that C Keep time. I'm, I've got my uh, foot tap in here, so. So yeah, you can really change the feel depending on what you're playing. Anyway, so. Uh, ah, that's a great idea. So, Al. Uh, Nirvana, I'm going to call you Nirvana because I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, says, hi, hola, or hola, I should say. Como esta? Um, he says, uh, do a, a video of using the Mustang amp to make a preset. Now, that might be fun, actually. I could do that on a live stream. Only thing is, I'd have to borrow Brian's because I don't have one anymore. So, uh, I've got about eight friends with a Mustang 3 now. So, what I might do is uh, do, do a live preset day. Why not? Absolutely. Sounds like a, a pretty cool idea. So I got asked, um, do I still use the Klon and the Maxon? Um, and do I use the Klon as a volume boost or the drive boost? Yes, I do. I recently just posted a video of Ryan and I using Super Reverbs live on stage. I was using the Klon KTR and the Overdrive OD820. I also do use the just the bog standard Maxon OD808 as well, which is actually back on my board at the moment, just because. And I've put the uh, Bright Eye um, Clean Boost on there as well, but I haven't tried it yet, so hopefully, I mean, I haven't tried it live, so we'll see how we go with that. I use the Klon into the green uh, overdrive, so the Klon's more of a, of a extra boost. You can check out my live tones, I put that on there, so. Uh, Yeah, if you like the sound, that's what I'm. That's what I'm using. So uh, I just got asked where I'm. Where am I from? I'm from uh, Melbourne, Australia. Sunny Melbourne. It's uh, 9:37 p.m. here. And uh, yeah, so I guess if anyone's got any questions or or what, or comments or or whatever you want to let me know, because uh, anything about you know, your songwriting process or things that you do. For me, I just jam around. I, I love to sit here and just try to come up with stuff. Um, and the great thing is, you know, I might not be recording this with my phone right now, which or anything, any device that I'd use to, to sort of keep this song fresh in my head. I'm streaming it to YouTube. It'll be on YouTube. So that'll be my reference. And maybe on the next album, that'll be a song. You know, uh, it'll be more refined, but... It all starts with something just like that, trusting that I, I, if I like it, hopefully other people like it. That's that's what I think about. And I don't really write songs for other people, but I write. I know if I'm onto a winner or, or something that, if I dig it, odds are someone else will dig it. I think I've got decent taste in music and a pretty diverse taste in music as well. So yeah. All right, so Mark from the US says, I love your videos. Uh, thanks, man. Appreciate that. He says, just by chance, I saw you were live this morning and tuned in. Um, how do I find out in advance when you are doing a live video? Now, the only ones that I put up in advance or warnings for or whatever are my um, Google Plus Hangouts because we've got maybe 25 people that are on a list for that. And when I do these improv ones, I, I, just, I just try them. I don't, I don't. It's whenever I've got time and when I'm motivated. And I got home after uh, spending three hours trying to get home because of lack of public transport tonight. I thought, I want to play some guitar. And I had some concepts for this video um, in my head. Not not so much the, the guitar playing part, but I thought it might be interesting just to sit down with a guitar and try to come up with something and show people how they sound. So it's an in, it's a on in the, in the moment kind of decision. I don't really plan these out. All I know is when I do them at 10 a.m. my time, a lot of people miss out and they say, why can't you try a different time of the day? 
So that's what this stream is. It's a, a different time of the day kind of stream. So uh, yeah, I may I may actually do another one on Sunday my time, uh, which is Saturday in the US, and uh, I might go for a similar time on a Sunday. We'll see how we go. Maybe a little earlier actually. But uh, yeah, there's never any um, planning at the moment that goes into these. It's just whenever I like. All right, so uh, uh, Ginger asks, um, do you have back tone wired to the bridge? Yes, I do. Yeah, um, I never use these. I think tone controls on a Strat should just be removed. I could get a seriously away with a pick guard with no tone controls. You know, just cover them up, if you know what I mean. So, uh, yeah, it, it is. So... I think. Maybe not. I never use it. Oh yeah. I don't know if it's actually doing anything. No. No, it doesn't do anything. You know what? I've never used that on this guitar. I haven't had it long. But um, no, it only works on all the, the other positions. That's really odd. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Yeah, well, I never use them anyway. So for me, having, like, I want my bridge bridge pickup to be as steely and as meaty as I can. And if it's too toppy, I'd just go over to my amp and turn the treble down. I, I really don't get any use out of these tone controls. They always stay at 100% volume. Um, the only one I would use is my volume control just for doing chord stuff. That was a bit messy, but yeah. Alright, so uh, Ben Entertainment, how are you, man? Thanks for dropping in, always good to see you. Um, he says, uh, hey Shane, looking to replace the pickups in my Strat eventually. Any specific set of Zex coils you'd recommend? It just depends what you like, man. I, I like the I like the more modern sound, which is probably why I love this. It's got a bit more of a um, while it's got a classic Strat sound, it's pretty hot. So I'd probably go for the same set that I had um, in mind. But have a good listen to them because there are some differences in the uh, output and the, the way that they're voiced. So uh, they're great, man, for, for noiseless pickups or hum-free ones, I should say. They're way better than like any of those shitty sort of Fender ones. So uh, I just got 12 thumbs down for saying that. But I've, I've owned every set of Fender noiseless pickups that I, that I know of. And uh, yeah, I think the uh, Zex Coil ones are, are much, much better. So uh, yeah, check them out, man. I can't believe my uh, tone control doesn't work on the bridge. I'm kind of happy about that, actually. Because that's the sound that you want. Why, why would you want it to sound like muted and weird? Tomorrow in Melbourne here, we've got a guitar show in Caulfield. It's like a, a, where they do like the horse racing. They're turning that into some sort of guitar show that I've never been to before. So I may pop down. I'll see what the day brings. But uh, if anyone else is in Melbourne, Australia, and you are going to the show, let me know. And if you see me or whatever, um, feel free to say hi. I might head down for an hour or two and see what it's all about. <laughs> In regards to Ben's question, you know what? I, I was I always had trouble remembering the actual uh, like the digits on the pickups that I had in my Strat. Um, I it just they never sunk in. So uh, I know it's like the Texas special. Uh, set, sorry, not the Texas specials. The Texas set that um, Anthony came up with from uh, uh, Steve Snacks. So uh, yeah, th that was the set that I had in mind, and that's that sort of modern fat sort of strat sound so if you 
If you're into that, definitely give them a look. The second tone control is usually wired to the middle pickup. Yeah, you're right, but I've also had strats where um, the bridge pickup is active on this tone control as well. So that's uh, like I said, I never I never use the um, the tone controls on a strat or any of my guitars really. I, I seriously could. I wish my three three five was a volume control for each pickup. That's it. <laughs> it doesn't need tone controls either. Like that whole woman tone thing that everyone goes, oh, hey, you, you, you won't be able to do the woman tone. Who cares? <laughs> it sounds like crap. I think as you get older and you play more, and you play loud a lot, uh, you need that tops. That top end's kind of helpful. So protect your ears, kids. So Ben says he might see me down the guitar show tomorrow. Cool. I think I'm going to head over to Sky Music for a little while. Um, Dr. Rick's gas and fur. He's used the old uh, Super Reverb a couple times now. And uh, he's got a lot of toy amps. You know, those single 12-inch combos that you get. Uh, those boutique ones that are about this big. So we, we plugged him into the man's amp <laughs> a couple times. And uh, I think he's now gassing for a 40-watt Vibrolux, which is a 210 the half version of the uh, Super Reverb here. So uh, I'm going to see if anything silly happens tomorrow. And every time, <laughs> every time either I'm with him or he's with me, someone does something stupid. So uh, I'm guessing if he if he likes the amp, I hope he buys one. Actually, I, I really he likes this what we like to call a chicken scratch sound. So I don't know if you most of you guys will know Rick from my channel and uh, from the band and all that kind of stuff. He likes this really sort of scratchy um, tweed sound, you know, like the amp's about to explode because you've got it cranked up so far. Whereas I like the big round full sound like these and the Blues Deluxes and stuff. But uh, I think I think we might have might have corrupted him the other night. When that video that I posted of Ryan and I playing the Super Revo, Brick got up for the second set. He actually filmed that on his, iPh on his iPhone and sent it to us. So we don't have any footage of him playing it, unfortunately. I should have asked uh, one of the other guys to uh, film him for a few minutes because he was cooking as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I hope he... I'd like to see him back in the Fender camp and uh, I don't think, you know, he could probably buy two of the Vibro Luxes for the price of one of his boutique amps that he normally buys. So, uh, be good to have him back in the PCB uh, camp. Alright, so Isaac Ord says, uh, Well, I've customized Strat with two PATH humbuckers, pickups, and use a tone control for the bridge, because that's what I wanted. Oh, yeah, yeah, look, there's there's nothing wrong with um, using tone controls for any guitar. I, for what I like, I set up my amp the way that I like the sound of it before I even need to use any tone controls. Um, over the years, I've learnt, like, have everything wide open, set up your amp and set up your pedals for that situation uh, anytime the only time i'd use any of these tone controls is if i'm playing through someone else's amp and it sounded like a blizzard of nails and i would very very you know minimal just just turn it back a hair i i really don't like the sound of guitars with tone controls on um but that said that's my setup that's not your setup or anyone else's so there's no right or wrong guys it's just uh just the way I, I try to set my stuff up is just to do it where there's no, very little tweaking is what I'm all about when I play live now. So uh, yeah, yeah, good point. No, I appreciate that. And also um, check out Ginger Lefty's uh, YouTube channel, folks. He's got a YouTube channel. He sends me stuff from time to time on, uh, through Facebook and he's a lefty and he guess he's redheaded. <laughs> And he, he says, well, I like his quote. It was, I saw something posted. He was like, uh, um, oh, it was a really funny quote. It was like, jinx twice or something like that. You know, he's a lefty and he's redheaded. I thought that was, that was pretty funny. I don't know. I have no bias towards lefties or, or gingers, but uh, it was hilarious. So uh, definitely check out his channel. 
Uh, all right, let me just scroll down here. So we've got Victor. How are you, man? Welcome. Greetings from Spain. How you going? So we've got a couple of people from Spain. So this is a bit of a different um, audience. We've got Aussies and people from Spain. And a couple of the guys from the States earlier as well, which is cool. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know, folks. I just thought I'd, I'd get on here, have a chat, see what was going on, play some stuff, come up with a song. And for those who have just joined, I literally came up with a song on the live stream, like a verse and chorus. And it felt pretty good by the end of it. So... Um, it goes to show how quick and easy coming up with ideas can be if you just sit there for a little while and persist. <laughs> and I'm like that. I, I'd persist even if the second part of that change took me another 45 minutes. I might not do it all in one night, but I would I would just noodle around with the, with the verse and eventually something would click where I'm like, oh, how about this change? And then bang, all of a sudden it works. So that's cool. <laughs> Isaac says he's subscribing because he's a ginger. That's cool. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Mr. Uh, ginger Lefty, you, you, you'll get some uh, get some extra subs. That's cool. I can't share my uh, computer screen tonight. I'm, I'm shooting with a video camera here. Let me know how it looks too, if you can, if the quality is okay. Um, I've got a different mod on my video camera at the moment. It's sort of supposed to make the colors look cool. Um... Hopefully the sound's all good as well. Alright, cool. Yeah, so that's a, that's probably about it for tonight, I reckon. Unless anyone has any questions. I just thought it'd be fun to do some songwriting, some songwriting tips, and come up with something that sounds like a tune within, you know, within an hour. And that's something that I'll, I'll work on. I'll, I'll try and get that finished at some point. Um, so Ben Entertainment says whereabouts is Sky Music? Uh, it's sort of, it's like on the way to. I always forget the sub of Clayton. It's in Clayton. Um, just Google it, man. S K Y Music, and uh, yeah, I, it'll be pretty empty in there tomorrow because the guitar show's on. So um, I'm not sure if we're going tomorrow or Sunday yet, but uh, I reckon it's it's a pretty cool store. They got lots of lots of good lefties in there. Alright, so Mark R says he missed the first part of this stream. Will you post? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what you can do, um, actually, after after the stream is done, it takes about 15, 20 minutes and then it'll be public. I'm not sure if I have DVR turned on right now. Yeah, I do. So, you can actually, um, once I, I'm about to leave, you can just grab the cursor and pull it back all the way to the left or to wherever you like and um, yeah you'll be able to uh, watch it from there. I'm just gonna grab a drink folks, I'll be I'll be two secs, one second. Let's just uh Alright I'll be two secs. Right, so uh, Isaac says, uh, do I know any affordable guitars with super fat necks because they don't seem to exist? Yeah, I actually demoed, or a friend of mine, Brian, demoed one recently. Um, it's super affordable. It's like 80 bucks US. It's um, Just type in, what's Gear Best? Just type in Gear Best guitar into YouTube and you'll find it with the link there. It's... No joke, the neck on the on this other guitar, which is in the other room, is twice as fat as this, and it's a Strat-style guitar. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's 
that would be my suggestion for something affordable. Uh, other than that, if it depends what your definition of affordable is, but for me, like Epiphones are affordable, um, and you can occasionally buy uh, sort of some of the arch top guitars have some bigger necks on them as well. So, or you know, like the three three five style guitars. I've had one with a really big neck, one with a small neck. Um, yeah, uh, some of the casinos have a bit thicker necks, and also they're not super fat. I wouldn't call them super fat, lun like me. So, uh, yeah, they're um, just yeah. The gear best one is probably the biggest neck I've seen on a cheap guitar ever. Um, but yeah, the, you know the quality is not fantastic, so keep that in mind as well. <laughs> difference between like a major or a fifth and say a minor chord in the right or wrong spot man it just makes or breaks it you know sometimes you play a, a like I'll instead of playing a minor like I should have I played a fifth and I was like oh it's awful Epiphone BB King uh, is probably the biggest neck ever cool I haven't seen one of those since 1999, which was the year I officially picked up a guitar for the first time I actually bought one. Um, and that was when I was in Michigan, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I went to a music store there. It's probably still around. It's been a long, long time since I've been to Ann Arbor. I actually know. Well, yeah, it has. It has been a long time. And uh, yeah, they had a BB left-handed BB King Epiphone guitar back then, and... I, you know, I didn't know anything about Epiphone Gibson or anything, and I, I saw that and I went, wow, this is awesome. I knew who B.B. King was in terms of, I'd heard his name and um, all that kind of stuff, but I, yeah, I didn't know if the guitar was any good, but it was beautiful, and it was a, it was reasonably affordable, but the fact was, I, was, I didn't have, back then I didn't have enough money, and probably still don't, but when I was traveling, the last thing you want to do sometimes is blow your budget early on on a guitar, and, uh, yeah, so, man, they're, they're nice guitars, man. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to play a lefty. Man, I'd love to lay pedals. I'm really just enjoying them. They just sound, make everything sound good. Yeah, so as I was saying, the loop pedal can be great for just coming up with stuff, as can just be a delay pedal. Um, let's try a different... I'm going to go down to digital delay here. Alright, let's tap tempo this thing. Some of you might remember me saying this, but when I do a lot of the, um, the intro music, I just use the delay pedal and I come up with something or try to come up with something that works for intro music. So I just use a delay and just come up with some weird stuff. Let's get the mix up. Let's crank it. All right. Too many uh, slapbacks. Let's try this. No. no. Let's try this. So I just 
play random stuff like that to come up with that kind of music as well. So Isaac says, 1999 was the year he was born. Man, I'm getting old, i tell you what. Ben says, uh, your setup now sounds like a dream. You have a great combination of gear. Thanks, man. It's funny that, uh, like, I've had, you know, I think I've had five strats. <laughs> and uh, I've had two that I really liked. Uh, the other one was pretty much this without the uh, rosewood neck, uh, fingerboard, I should say. Had just the maple fingerboard, but uh, I, I modded that too much in the end and I wrecked it. So I think now my ear, this is the thing about this amp. You get a good amplifier, your guitars will sound great. <laughs> Have an amp that's all right, your guitars are gonna sound all right. Like if you played a, if I played a $4,000 left-handed custom shop Strat into this, it wouldn't sound any better than this. It just it just won't because uh, the amp is what's oh the hands, but the the amp is where the make it makes the biggest difference to the tone. So um, yeah, I really I really love the uh, Super Reverb. It's definitely my favorite amp I've ever owned by by a mile in terms of valve tube amps. It's, there's no comparison. something cool about just playing with a delay pedal and a nice sound you know the worst thing is when you hit a wrong note you hear it about 10 times Sounds like a one of those old school. Uh, what, are the, what are those keyboards called? Anyway, I can't remember. All right, folks, I'm gonna grab some dinner. Well, some second, lots of food. I had some Subway on the way home, but it took me three hours to get home. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot off. But thanks thanks for hanging around. And uh, yeah, de definitely skip back, watch the start of the video again, if you're into songwriting or the approach that I take to come up with ideas. And uh, hopefully it might help you in some ways. Uh, it might open some some doors, creative ways of trying to come up with stuff or whatever. So um, yeah, you can see how an idea that I, I never had just evolved into something that I really liked in in you know a short amount of time. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Mark. So definitely um, amps before expensive guitars. An average guitar sounds great in an expensive amp, or not just an expensive one, but a quality amp. So, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Um, so, Jay also says, Blackstar HT5R opinion. I don't know if I've tried that one. Let me, let me have a look here. Blackstar HT5R. Oh uh, yeah, I've played that. Look, it, it was okay. It's not really my sort of sound. I'm not going to sit there and say it sounded crap. It just wasn't f the sound that I would go for in a small amp. It's, if you're into the heavier tones, though, definitely Jeff, Jeff they make some great stuff. So definitely check them out. Um, but there's some cool cheapy amps out there. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, price doesn't define tone. It never has. But what I what I meant to say, sorry, I'm like really tired. What I meant to say was a good amp will make an average guitar sound great. That that's the difference. It doesn't happen, doesn't matter what price it is, but you plug in a 
you know, a Squire classic vibe, and they're, they're decent guitars, or even a, even a cheap Squire into a super reverb, it's going to sound great. So that that's what I'm getting at. You could plug a three thousand dollar custom shop Straddle Tally into what's a really crap amp like a Samic. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't lose any subscribers there, but you know, like a Samic amplifier is going to take these, this guitar and make it sound very, very average. So, uh, yeah, it's all in the amp. If you're gonna, if you've got three grand burning a hole in your pocket, go buy like a two thousand dollar amp and a one thousand dollar guitar, and you'll be loving it. <laughs> so, uh, so thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging around, folks. And if I go to the guitar show tomorrow, I may post. A uh, thing on Facebook about it. I'll, I'll keep everybody posted on that. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging around, and yeah, leave all your comments if you uh, on the, you know, if you're going to catch up on the stream, you can watch it again later. You can leave some comments on there, and I'll get back to you as well. Thanks, folks. Rock on and write some songs, because no one wants to hear Mustang Sally anymore. <laughs>